Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. It's time to talk about a tech tree which has been not really discussed over the last little bit, and the reason why is because it seemed a little bit out there. But it also has been leaked and pseudo-confirmed that an Irish tech tree is being worked on when it comes to War Thunder. Now, with the expansion of War Thunder ever expanding, with nations such as Israel being added, it's opened up a lot of ideas from many different people, and it seems like some of them have been confirmed. The Irish tech tree actually has some interesting stuff in it, obviously mainly the ground, since the aviation portion is not really as existent, but in this video we're going to go through a few examples which may get into the game once it's added. As always, if you enjoy this content, make sure to subscribe to the channel and also like the video. The first vehicle we're going to have a look at is the Sleeve Naman, or as it's known in Irish, the Sleeve Naman. This is a interesting vehicle. Uh, basically, it uh, is a armored Rolls Royce car. This one is a specific one which still exists today. Um, it's one of 13 920 pattern armored Rolls Royce cars which were acquired from the British by the Irish Free State after the Anglo-Irish Treaty in December of 1921. The 1920 car itself was a slightly modified version of a 1914 pattern Rolls Royce armored car which had originally been produced by the British Admiralty uh, during the First World War. The first 1920 pattern ARRs were destined for service with the British Armoured Car Companies in Mesopotamia. However, the worsening situation for the British in the War of Independence, which had broke out in January of 1919, led to the cars being diverted for service in Ireland, with the 5th Armoured Car Company of the Royal Tank Corps. The armoured Rolls-Royce cars were deployed in Ireland, in the same theatre as the Peerless and Lancia armoured cars, but was seen as having the edge in terms of mobility. It, their slim line uh, design, after earning the nickname the Whippet in Ireland. What has assured uh, Silab Naban's special place in history is the fact that it formed part of the General Michael Collins's convoy, which was ambushed on the 22nd of August 1922 at Beale, Na Mblath in West Cork. The ambush resulted in the tragic death of General Collinge, who was then Commander-in-Chief of the National Army, with General Richard Mulcahy as the Chief of Staff. The vehicle has access to a Vickers 303 machine gun. It has 0.335 inches of armor, uh, and also at the same time has access to a 50 horsepower silver ghost engine. Uh, and, uh, well, sorry, a Rolls-Royce 4050 horsepower six-cylinder, uh, with the power being 40 to 50 horsepower of the Silver Ghost. The uh, actual speed of this thing is 60 miles an hour on the road, so we can definitely wander around in this thing. The next vehicle is a A34 Comet, but not a standard one, but the Irish did use um, uh, the A34 Comet, but this is actually known as the Headless Coachman, Basically, they took a turret off of it uh, and then added a 90mm PVPJ-1110 recoilless rifle. And uh, this Comet itself actually never had a turret. It was part of the surplus, um, which was designed to give up a little bit of parts uh, to the other Comets that they had. So instead of just leaving it as is, they decided to make it into an anti-tank platform by sticking a recoilless rifle on it. So, overall, an interesting idea. Uh, probably would have been better just to add it uh, to something else, but say la vie, here we are. Another interesting thing about the Irish is they used a bunch of variants of the AML car that you'll be used to. In-game, we have the AML-90 and also the Ireland, which is very similar to the AML-90. The Irish used the AML-20, the AML-60-7CS, the AML-25, the AML-90, and also the AML-30. So they used a bunch of different variants of the good old vehicle, and the major difference between them is, of course, the armaments that they have access to, with the AML-20 having a 20mm, the AML-30 having a 30, and so on and so forth. 
it is a type of vehicle which would be kind of interesting to see at some point. There was even a version of the AML-60 which had a coaxial 20mm cannon on it, uh, which obviously is pretty fun, so maybe we'll see something like that. You also have the AML-60-12 which had the 60mm and also a 12.7mm on top of it. There was even a French version which had access to a 20mm turret on it, uh, the CNMP one which maybe we'll see in the future. But yeah, it's kind of odd how we haven't seen an expansion of the AMLs, but the reason might be because of this Irish tech tree. The Irish also had a Churchill Mark VI that had a Rolls-Royce V1255M Merlin engine in it. After a successful training stint in England, the Republic of Ireland was leased three Churchill Mark VI's in 1948, followed by a fourth in 1949. Ireland continued to rent the vehicles until 54, in which it was asked if they could be outright bought, which they were. The Churchills were driven to Glen of Mal twice a year for gunnery training and demonstrations. However, this caused problems with the local townships as the tanks were tearing up the roads. To solve this, the military purchased a single diamond T transporter truck from America, which could only take one tank at a time, though this was alleviated slightly when one tank became stuck in the mud at Glen of Mal, and they simply removed the gun and left the tank there. Problems began to surface in 1955, as the Churchill was by this point outdated and spare parts were becoming a problem. One Churchill was cannibalised for parts, but it was only a temporary solution. However, Captain Collier of the Cavalry Workshop suggested replacing the outdated Bedford engine with a more powerful Rolls-Royce Merlin. The Churchill selected was ZD5052, due to the engine having been removed due to the problems in 54. The engine was salvaged from a retired Supermarine Seafire, a Merlin V1255M, along with some other parts that were taken for experiments in cooling. While they did get the engine in in 1956 and some tests completed, the project was considered a failure, and the idea dropped without records as to why though the most likely reason was less than a year later, Ireland had completely run out of ammo for the Churchill. And then last but not least, the Vickers Mark 11, which is a very fun, interesting vehicle. This uh, is a combining two general ideas. Imagine sticking a turret on top of a APC. That's pretty much what it is. Looks very kind of futuristic in its style. The turret itself you may actually be uh, kind of uh, interested in because it's the same turret that's on the VFM5 or the Vickers Mark V. It's armed with an L7 105mm low recoil rifled gun. It also has access to a 7.62mm and also a 12.7mm. Um, the actual vehicle itself doesn't have a ton of armor on it. Um, it's not something which really is kind of, um, you know, prioritized, but it it does carry a crew of four and can carry seven um, in its booty to be able to uh, get it to the battlefield. In general, uh, the vehicle itself uh, has a lot of cool things, including the Cummins 64 TA 8.3 diesel with 350 horsepower. This thing can actually move over 100 kilometers an hour on road, which is pretty fun. The vehicle is only 20 tons as well, so it's not as heavy as a lot of others, even though it is incredibly spacious and large. Overall, a pretty interesting vehicle, and hopefully we see it soon. And uh, at the same time, that's the end of most of the vehicles in this tech tree. As you can see, very varied and a lot of interesting stuff. Hopefully we see it soon. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Millie Draper, Juan the Panda, Nick R. Kupila, Carrion Crow, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Merciless Reaper, Orange Tail, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Moxie B. Young, Peter Grayling, Jerry Provolt, Bereen, Alan Hacker, Sem Arslan, Uncle Bean, Derek R., and Lafouche for supporting the channel.